In this beginner's guide, you will learn how to understand your user interface. To the lower left of the screen, you can see all my stats. The temperature, the energy level, the thirst level, and also the hunger level. Now, as you can see, the temperature is going down pretty quickly. Now, how do we check our status or our inventory? You just simply have to press and hold spacebar. It's gonna provide you with 250 calories, arrows indicating that the temperature is slightly going up, then the energy is slightly going down, also the same as the thirst and the hunger. I will also show you how to avoid freezing to death. You can enter the vehicle, it's gonna protect us a little bit from the wind outside. Not only it provides some light, but also some heat. As you can see the green arrows pointing upwards. This means it's much better than the one that are equipped right now. Different items here to start a fire that will affect our chance of success. As you can see in the top, in the lower left, our temperature is starting to slowly improve. And also learn how to interact with your environment. You can interact with items on the ground or anywhere else by just left clicking on them. I have just crouched now by pressing control, left control. And you can holster the lantern, the equipped item by pressing H on your keyboard. Press shift there to sprint. Two cooking slots, these two big rocks here. So we're gonna select this. Gonna press cook, select the can of beans. I'm gonna press right click to leave it there so we can complete the cooking process but here's a nice trick if you press on the campfire you have the option to take a torch so let's take up a torch we will also look at some gameplay mechanics here in the upper right corner of the screen the time of day you see the sun is going down and the moon is coming up to the left and when you put some more fuel on your fire you're gonna see here on the top right the heat output will change and also the duration. Our energy is drained, so whenever your energy is drained like so, you are also less capable of carrying much in your backpack. You can see the red icon in the lower right. That means you are over encumbered and you're gonna be much more slow to sprint or to walk. So you're probably wondering, how am I gonna get that health up? And sleep is gonna improve your health. And sleep is gonna improve your health. But before you go to sleep, you also have to make sure that you are well nourished. Don't go to bed if you're too thirsty. Make sure you drink some water because if you don't have enough calories and you go to sleep with, with an empty stomach, your health is not gonna improve. It's gonna do the complete opposite you're gonna lose health. If I use my hunting knife, it's gonna be much more easier. It's gonna take less time, nine minutes, and also less calories. So always select the best tool for the job. Right now, the hunting knife is the best I have. Hello everyone, Survival Junkie here. Welcome to a special edition of The Long Dark. Uh, in this episode, I'm going to try and share some of my previous experiences with you guys for those of you that have never played The Long Dark and are not sure how to proceed I'm gonna guide you uh, with some simple steps and some advice on how to start the game uh, and how to survive in this extraordinary survival experience so Let's just start by um, selecting the survival mode and start a new game. For this experience we're gonna choose the Voyageur uh, uh, difficulty, so let's take that. Also let's start our experience, our guide in Mystery Lake. And I wanna choose a female character take this feet why not we're gonna call this survive ball guide 
There you go, isn't that pretty? Now we can pretty much begin anywhere on the map. And it could be night, it could be day. Let's see. Oh, look at that. Looks like it's daytime. That's nice. Okay. Take a close look to the lower left of the screen. You can see all my stats. The temperature, the energy level, the thirst level, and also the hunger level. Now, the first thing you want to do when you start a new game and want to improve your chances of survival, you have to start gathering some resources. For instance, some um, sticks. Let's go gather some sticks on the ground so we can eventually make a fire. You'll be able to find sticks pretty much everywhere in any wooden area. There you go, we have a stick right here. Let's pick this up. You can interact with items on the ground or anywhere else by just left clicking on them. You first click once, it will examine the item and you click once again to take it. Or you can press the right click to just leave it there. Another example is how you gather stuff. You see we have a cattail plant here. Just gonna click and press and hold the left click until the little thing charges. And now you can take multiple items like cattail head which can be used as tinder. You will also find some bigger branches on the ground, like so. But without the proper tools, you cannot hope to harvest it yet. Let's pick some more sticks. Okay. Now, as you can see, the temperature is going down pretty quickly. Uh, let's try and find some shelter. Okay. Let's go inside here now. As with the other things, you just interact by just pressing left click and holding the left click. There we go, We've just opened the door. Now we are inside the trailer. Sometimes you'll be able to find things pretty easily just by looking around, observing. Like we have some scrap metal on the floor. Can pick that up. Also, there's a book hidden just behind this shelf. I have just crouched now by pressing control, left control. And I'm gonna pick this book up. So first click is just gonna examine the item. Then you press you click once again to take it. I'm gonna press control once again so I can stand up. What do we have here? A spray can? I'll take it. Let's search the backpack. I'm gonna click and hold. Okay, we found an accelerant. This is gonna be useful to start a fire. A flare. This is really good if you wanna scare wildlife away. So it's pretty good in critical situations. Let's take this also. What else can we find inside this trailer now? Some wood, some broken wood. I'm gonna take this. You can use this as fuel on the campfire. Oh, what do we have here? A can of soda. Let's pick this up. Useful. So you're gonna find a lot of food items in the game. And this is a good example. You can see on the right, the description, so this is a summit soda, sweet carbonated drink full of high fructose corn syrup. It's going to provide you with 250 calories. It also gives you the condition of this soda can. So it's at 22% right now. So yeah, food items can degrade with time. And it also indicates how heavy this item is. So it's 0 0.25 kilograms. So we're just going to take this for now. And also, if you have noticed, the little backpack icon on the lower right 
it says we have about 7 kilograms over 30. Once you go over the 30 kilograms, you're going to get encumbered and eventually you're going to get slower. So you have to avoid getting too slow. That's cool. As I told you, you have to explore and look around every corner. You're going to have you're going to find all kinds of anymore. items that are hidden away. So we have found ourselves a tin of coffee. It's going to provide us with five cups of coffee. Let's take this. And some dog food in this crate here. This looks like it's pretty much everything. Let's... Oh! There's also a plastic container here. Let's look, take a look inside. Let's be prepared oh, for an anything. energy bar. This is pretty good. Okay, let's take this also. Some beans. All right. How is our body temperature doing? As you can see, there are small arrows indicating that the temperature is slightly going up. Then the energy is slightly going down. Also, the same as the thirst and the hunger. Now, how do we check our status or our inventory? You just simply have to press and hold spacebar. And you see this option wheel. Now we're going to check the center option, which is status. Let's click on that. Now you can see that we are chilled. We are rested. Okay, slacked for the thirst and peckish for the hunger. And we have about... 1077 calories stored in our body and also in the lower left you can see the temperature now take a look at the temperature the air temperature inside this trailer is uh, minus 3 and it feels like 0 degrees here in the upper corner of the screen let's take a look at the clothing can see everything that's equipped on our character right about now we have some really not so warm clothing we have a ragged plaid shirt thermal under underwear short socks running shoes and on our head we have a decent baseball cap and a wool scarf each of these items have their own characteristics and their co own condition as you can see the decent cap is in pretty good shape. It provides about 0 0.4 degrees of warmth. It doesn't provide any protection against the wind or any protection against the water or snow. And also no protection at all against any kind of attacks from wildlife. And it's pretty much the same for all the other clothing. As you can see, our thermal underwear is in pretty bad shape. You can even see some holes in it and that's pretty cool 27 percent condition you can see it's really scratched and full of holes to indicate the condition of your clothing so that's pretty cool really nice now this is your backpack the third category in your inventory as you can see you can check all these items by their category you have clothing you have food and drinks your tools as if you can see it for now we don't have that many tools also materials that we have collected uh, fire starting materials and this is all of your inventory in one group all right and all of this weighs about 8.32 kilograms that's the total of the weight that also includes your clothing that you're wearing. Now let's take a look at the crafting tab. There are plenty of recipes for you to explore and do. Also you have the journal and the map. And for now the map is completely blank because we have not explored or we didn't draw any maps to indicate where we are. Okay, we have taken a quick look at the inventory and status window. Let's get back to our survival experience. Whoa, it's getting pretty dark. By pressing the space bar 
and holding you can see here in the upper right corner of the screen the time of day you see the sun is going down and the moon is coming up to the left so if I wait a couple of minutes more this whole place is gonna be pitch black so I'm not gonna be able to see anything this is a good opportunity for me to also uh, tell you how to actually provide some light let's hold the space bar and look for the light sources for now we only have two options either you use some wood matches or a flare but for this exercise let's just use the wood matches it's not gonna last long but it's gonna be helpful okay I have just equipped the wood matches in my hands you can see and now I'm gonna press and hold the left click there, there you go you have some light you have to exp look around pretty quickly because the match is gonna go out real quickly it's gonna burn out there you go that's it there is no bed in this trailer so I'm gonna try and go outside let's say for instance that I cannot see the exit I'm gonna light another of these matches you see the door I'm gonna exit outside and the wind is pretty intense let's get inside this second trailer Okay, we are inside the second trailer here then again we don't have any light sources gonna use the wood matches and again lighting this up have a book and the cloth on the floor soda on the shelf we have some beds mm. okay Let's see now, I'm going to use the flare, since it's going to provide me with more light for a longer time. Let's search the locker. This locker is closed. Oh! Have a granola bar, some more cloth. This stuff will come in handy. Some socks. We found this another flare. Oh, some wool mittens. Let's look under the bed. You sometimes can find some useful items hidden underneath the furniture. Oh, search first aid kit. Let's take a look inside. There's nothing inside. I go outside now. We can enter the vehicle. It's gonna protect us a little bit from the wind outside. I think I can use this. Okay, we found up some golf gloves, some more cardboard matches, and I. I think this is pretty much everything there is. Let's get inside this hydro dam. Okay, we got inside. Still have a little bit of light from our flare. There's a briefcase here, we're gonna search and try and find as much as possible. Some tools would be really good. Let's head inside. Oh, there is some lantern fuel here. For anything. Some more paint. Some mittens. Oh, a revolver cartridge. Let's check this drawer. All right, our flare is almost out. Some scrap metal. Oh no, 
Oh no, we're in the darkness. Oh man. Okay, let's look at our inventory. Over here. So this flare is no longer useful. So let's throw this out by just pressing on the drop button here. Do I if at home warm up soon? Oh, I'm getting really cold now. I'm freezing. As you can see here, it's, I'm freezing because the air temperature inside the, inside this building is minus five percent, and my clothing is not able to cover that right now. So it feels like minus two degrees. So as long as you are freezing, and that this is in the negative, your health will uh, decrease until you are dead. So let's avoid that. Let's check the clothing. Uh, it seems like we have found some mittens earlier. Let's check and see which which ones of these are warmer. It seems that the first option is the best we have right now. So I'm just gonna press wear. As it's gonna affect the worm to bonus here in the lower left. If I take them off, you see it changes back to the original status. Let's wear them. And also we have found some socks that are not providing much, but let's equip them nonetheless. Now the status is minus one degree, which is really not ideal right now. Let's try and improve our chances by uh, repairing. If you want to repair an item, you just have to press action right over here. And then if you have a sewing kit in your inventory and the right materials, like in this case the cloth, you can attempt a repair action. So our repair skill is not that very good right now. It's gonna take about 30 minutes to repair and it has a 70% chance, chance to succeed. And it's gonna repair about 35% of the whole condition of the shirt. So let's try and do that. Oh, yes, of course, we cannot repair while we are in the dark. So let's try and remedy that. Let's craft ourselves a torch. So for the torch, as you can see, I have moved into the crafting tab. And then I can go into the blueprints here. Then I go down the list and we have torch. You need about three sticks, one cloth, some lamp oil. We have just found some lamp oil earlier and it takes about 15 minutes to craft. So let's press this begin crafting button here. As you can see the life is decreasing slowly. Okay, we have a torch now. In the tool section, we have the torch right here. I'm going to use this. And now I'm going to press the left click to light it up with a match. Ta-da! Not only it provides some light, but also some heat. Right now, you, as you can see, there's it, the air outside feels like 2 degrees. So slowly it's going to raise our core temperature and also diminish the hypothermia risk that we are having right now, which is at about 31%. Let's take a quick look around, see if we can find any other useful items in the meantime. Oh, a rifle cartridge on the ground, some more spray paint. Let's check the locker. Nothing there. Oh, look at that. We have a storm lantern. I'm gonna pick this up. It has about half half a tank of fuel. As you can see, it's about 0 0.52 liters of lantern fuel. Let's uh, equip it by pressing space right away. And I'm going, as you can see, I dropped the torch, but I'm gonna pick that up. Um, I'm gonna spray space to equip it and I'm going to extinguish it by pressing and holding the left click like so so it doesn't consume all my torch using space again we're gonna select the storm lantern as a light source 
I'm gonna press the left click to light it up. And ta-da, we have a stone lantern. Take a look inside the trash can here. Some tinder plug. There's a metal container here. Let's I'll take it. Some more gloves. Oh, we have ourselves a bandage. Some nice posters. Let's take a look inside the locker. Oh. Gonna make a collection of these golf gloves now. Ah, oh, toilets. Now this is an interesting thing, toilets. Let's click on the toilet. You'll always find some potable water source in the toilets. We have 1.24 liters and we can choose to just take about one liter or half of that or just take everything. In this case it's good to, to just take everything. It's water that you can drink right away. It's safe to drink. Another trash can. Some cloth. Oh look at that. We have found ourselves oh, some so dog food. Cool. Oh, there are some stairs. Let's let's check upstairs. What can we find there? A water bottle. Let's take that. Oh, plenty of desks here, a book, medical locker. There's bound to be something Nobody good. Needs this anymore. Bandage, disinfectant, let's take that also. A worn hoodie, sweet. Let's equip that right away. Let's select this slot and press wear. Now we have about two layers. It's still not enough, but we're gonna improve our chances in the next couple of minutes. This stuff will come in handy. Whoa, look at this. Some nice boots. For now, we only have some running shoes, which do not pr provide much warmth, as you can see. Let's select these. As you can see, the green arrows pointing upwards. This means it's much better than the one that are equipped right now. So, it's best to select these to where instead, as you can see, it changes on the character image there. Also provides 5% of protection from lethal actions, from, you know, wolf bites and such and such. So, yeah, well, I see we're getting pretty hungry and also pretty thirsty. Let's drink some water. Or we can drink some soda, which also provides some hunger. So if you want to drink quickly or eat something quickly, use your spacebar, select the food tab here on the left, on the right, sorry. And then you can select anything you like from your inventory in this quick menu. A good idea would be to always consume the items that are uh in the worst condition like in this particular example this banged up dog food is a 33 percent of condition so you'll want to eat this first before eating the other ones because at some point it will just expire and it's not gonna be useful any longer Never nice know. we find ourselves some chips useful? some ketchup chips nonetheless Check these file cabinets. This oh, look at that. Handy. A nice took. Canadian uh, symbol. Look in the drawers of this desk. Real quick. Mm. Oh, found okay. some more soda. Oh, look at that. Revolver ammunition. You have to pay close attention to your environment if you want to hope and find some really cool items that are usually hidden behind furniture, underneath furniture yeah, so keep those eyes peeled okay let's go back downstairs and put our bedroll someplace and try and catch some sleep 
Oh, look at that. We have some uh, revolver cartridges on the floor. Cool. Okay, we open up the wheel of option, then we select campcraft, then you select the bedroll, and you can see it's red right now, so we cannot place it there, so we have to move around a little bit until we find a flat position, uh, like so. Let's put that down, and before we go to sleep, um, let's check if we have enough temperature. The bedroll offers 4.5 degrees so we're gonna be fine we're not gonna freeze to death okay let's close our lamp first by left clicking all right and I'm just gonna slowly point my cursor down towards the floor until I see the bedroll of course, you cannot see the bedroll, but you will see the crosshair that selects the bedroll. I'm gonna press on that, and I'm gonna select about eight hours of sleep. Eight hours of sleep, as you can see, if I select different hours of sleep, the calories that are burned dur during my sleep change. So for 8 hours of sleep, it's about 700 calories. We have plenty over here on the right, on the left. As you can see, 1500 calories. So we're good. Let's sleep. Press sleep right over here. Let's check the status. As you can see, the warmth has been replenished because of the bedroll. I am also rested. The whole eye is 100% full. I am thirsty though, and also hungry. So let's remedy to that by consuming some energy bars, drinking some soda. Let's drink some more soda here. Now let's see, the time of day, uh, the sun is about to rise. But do not forget, we are inside the building, so we don't have that many light sources. Let's check the inventory and the refuel our storm lantern. So I'm going to select the storm lantern inside the tool tab here. I'm going to use actions and then I'm going to select the refuel option. I only have a little bit of fuel left as you can see not that much and let's light our lantern up I'm gonna pick the bedroll select the bedroll and then pick it up and then I'm gonna head outside let's close this lantern up and you can holster the lantern the equipped item by pressing H on your keyboard there's a dead deer there now as you can see outside is pretty ugly weather check real quick the wind chill is minus 60 and the air temperature is minus 26, which gives a total of minus 37. So your temperature is going down real quick. You can see it right there. You have to travel quickly between uh, places. So let's just enter this trailer here to avoid getting frozen to death. Oh yes, I've already been here. Let's stay a while. Let's see the clothing tab once again. Since there's a storm outside, you can see that each item has slightly accumulated some wet uh, characteristic right here. It's 4% 4, 4 wet. Uh, once your clothing gets wet, it will also eventually get frozen and that clothing item will no longer provide much warmth so that's something to also keep in mind uh, 
when you uh, explore and you uh, travel outdoors. Always keep an eye on your clothing. All right. Let's see if we can probably mend a couple of these items. Let's see, we have some cloth. Let's attempt some repair on these thermal underwear. Ah, we failed. Damn it. We can also harvest this item if it's pretty much completely destroyed or you don't want to use it anymore, but you need to, to have some more cloth, you can always harvest it, but in this case we're just going to try and attempt another repair. But each time you attempt a repair and you fail, your cloth item is consumed, so you have to find some more cloth. Let's try this again. It didn't work. So let's take a quick look at the log here. So we have the journal. And if we select the second tab, we have the skills. Uh, you have a list of all your possible upgradable skills then, that you can use. Uh, for instance, there's the carcass harvesting, uh, the cooking, uh, fire starting. Uh, as you can see, the level 1 of fire starting has a base a 40% chance to start fires. You can improve that if you improve your skill. Ice fishing, rifle firearm, archery, mending. This is the skill that we're trying to use right now to mend some uh, under underwear. A revolver and gunsmithing. Gunsmithing, I think it's used to make, am to make ammunition and probably repair your firearms. You also have some collections that you can find diaries, photos, I guess, uh, and other interesting artifacts, okay? General notes, and you also have the stats of everything you have done so far, all your experience or previous games, and you can closely look at how many days you have survived in any given difficulty, and so on and so on. Uh, whoa, this is much better. Let's uh, wear this uh, wool talk instead. There we go. And also, we have a second slot. This scarf gives us 0 0.9. This talk is really, really destroyed. Let's see if we can make it better by repairing it. Yes! We succeeded in repairing it to 97%. So that's really good. And now we're gonna replace this wool scarf with the wool talk because it gives us even better worm characteristics, statistics here, and also windproof. There we go. Now we have two of these talks. Okay. Now we're out outside again. We can try and explore more of this region by going in this direction. The wind is not helping at all. There's one thing that you can do to avoid being frozen to death by the wind. You can use your environment to shield yourself from the wind. If you go near a cliff or uh, rocks or any kind of object to shield yourself from the wind. Let's use this tree over here. And you can, as you can see, there's an icon on the top of the screen that looks like a shield, like a small shield. And now the wind is not affecting us as much as before. But of course you cannot stay here forever. You have to keep moving. Now I have hypothermia Wait. risk. I'm so cold. I'm warming up a bit. Oh, look at that. Some branches and sticks. Let's grab those quickly now. And try and make a fire. Double clicking. It's really helpful if you want to 
harvest uh, things from the ground real quick. There's a couple of deers there by the by the creek. So let's try and start a fire. When you want to start a fire, it's always best to choose a, a spot that is not too windy. Because you don't want your fire to go out because, because of the wind. Let's try and get inside this train cart here. And open the door. So, we are pretty much protected from the wind inside here. Oh, look at that, the rifle I'll cartridge. Some newsprint. Oh! Some ear wraps. And also a, oh, a hunting knife. Now this is really cool. Granola bar. Right. Okay, let's see if I can make a, a fire. So choose camp craft and then fire. And then let's put this uh, here. Yeah, let's put this, actually, let's put this right over here. Okay, when it's green, you can place it down with left click. And now we have the fire starting screen. Let me explain real quick how this all works. On your left here, you have your fuel, your starter, your tinder, and also the book. Tinder is not the same as the app, no. It's to use to start your fire, so we can choose different items here to start a fire that will affect our chance of success which as it now stands it's 75 percent because we are using a book as fuel let's change that change that up to a uh, reclaimed wood and now the chance of success it's only 35 percent so avoid this don't try and start a fire by using the reclaimed wood choose either a stick which is 55 percent it's much better or if you have a book it's even even better now uh, we have a cattail head a tinder but you can also use tinder plug or a stack of papers or a newspaper whatever strikes your fancy and as for the matches you see they have a slight chance of success in difference uh, cardboard matches have 75 percent and the wood matches have an, a slightly bigger chance of success which now is at 80 percent now if you find yourself in a really critical situation like let's say you are some wolves are after you and you want to scare them away you want to build a fire real quick you can use an accelerant which is an optional we have found previously an accelerant you can use that and as you can see the chances of success are 100 percent use this as a last resort right now we're gonna leave this clear and let's try and start that fire before we freeze to death of course now we're just gonna have to patiently wait come on little fire it should work at 85 at 80 percent yes all right oh, lucky day. sweet as you can see in the top in the lower left our temperature is starting to slowly improve campfire is providing us with two degrees of warmth and now let's add some more fuel so you click on the fire, then you select add fuel and let's use some reclaimed wood. And when you put some more fuel on your fire, you're gonna see here on the top right the heat output will change and also the duration. So let's add the reclaimed wood and you can see the heat output going up slightly. It's gonna provide us with some more degrees. And now the fire is going to burn for about 36 minutes. Let's put some more sticks on that. The sticks add for about 10 minutes of fire duration. And each stick that you use, it's going to provide about 1 degree of heat. Okay, let's go back. 
take a look around we have a nice fire going okay what can we use the campfire for you can cook stuff as you can see you have two cooking slots these two big rocks here and we're gonna click on them and we can either melt some snow to make some water but I think we do have quite some water but for the sake of this example we're gonna press water now we do have a recycled can in our inventory that you can that we can use so we're gonna select this and now we're gonna smelt uh, the maximum amount which is half a liter of uh, snow and we are gonna cook this up if you point your cursor on on your can here you can see it's, it says it's snow it's cooking for about 17 minutes until the snow is completely melted but after that you're gonna also have to wait for the water to boil so it's safe to consume so don't just wait for the snow to melt it's not safe to consume yet okay let's see if we can cook something up we have a can of beans that we can cook my hypothermia risk just healed by being close to the fire the snow is almost melted now cool now it's a known potable water we have to still wait for about 18 minutes until it's completely boiled so let's uh, try and cook those beans in the meantime gonna press cook select the can of beans it's now opening cool in about 13 minutes it's gonna be completely cooked now remember that if you do not have any kind of tool like a hunting knife or a can opener, uh, you can always open the cans by bashing them. But if you bash the cans, you will lose a percentage of the food inside. As you can see right now, it provides about 600 calories. So if, uh, let's say, you bash the can to, op to open it up, you're gonna lose a percentage of that so I don't know you're gonna probably just get 500 calories instead of 600 okay, I'm gonna press right click to leave it there so we can complete the cooking process I'm try and add some more sticks on the fire to make it more hot so we can get our core can temperature higher that will allow us to uh, continue exploring outside for a longer period of time. Okay, where do we stand? Okay, the pork sun beans are hot, ready to be eaten. And as you can see here, in about 25 minutes, if you leave the can next to the fire, it will just burn and it will no longer be good. So always check up on your cooking don't leave things unattended or they will burn up and you will lose them so let's take this up and you can either just take it with you in your inventory or eat it right away by pressing space so let's press space you see the hunger goes up and it also provides us with a benefit warming up you can see a small blue a uh, cross there, a small plus icon on the status here. This is gonna warm you up for a couple of uh, minutes. Now our, also the water is completely boiled. Then again, like I said before, if you leave them for too long, they will burn, they will completely evaporate. So let's pick this up before it all burns down. I'm gonna take it. Don't forget to take your can so you can use it later so a couple of food items like coffee teas or beans or canned food that you heat up on the campfire will provide you with this uh, nice warm warming up benefit so 
yeah it protects you against cold while active you can see that here and now we're gonna just abandon abandon this campfire for now so we can keep exploring but here's a nice trick if you press on the campfire you have the option to take a torch a torch that might protect you from wildlife or even light up the way if it's night so let's take up a torch bye bye campfire all right okay it's daytime i know i probably don't need a torch but you never know you never know what you can encounter in the wild so you have to take all the chances uh, to keep yourself protected let's follow these train tracks I'm gonna press shift there to sprint if you use sprint your energy your eye icon is gonna drain much much more quickly so keep an eye on that also you don't want to deplete your energy too quickly take a couple of more of these sticks there are some crows in disguise whenever you see crows or if you hear them that means you are getting close to a carcass or a corpse in this case we have a deer carcass that you can harvest only that right now the carcass is frozen I think it's time for us to make a tutorial on harvesting some deer carcasses since we already have a torch in our hands let's try and make a fire like before gonna put this right next to the deer let's try and place it just behind this little hill so it's gonna be protected from the wind and place this down and instead of using the cardboard matches we're as a starter we're gonna select the torch which has a 19% left so this is a way to uh, you know uh, avoid using your your precious matches and also we're gonna keep using one of these books because we have three of them and now I have 80% chances of starting this fire by only using my torch. I'm not using any matches right Come on, now. Come on, little fire. Come on. Because sometimes, uh, depending on what difficulty you choose, matches are not that easy to find. Oh, that's a good one. All right. Well, I'm gonna extinguish my torch and put it back in my inventory by pressing H. And we have a nice fire going. Let's add some more sticks. Add fuel, add fuel, add fuel, add fuel. We have about 41 minutes of fire. Now, as you can see, this deer carcass is now slowly defrosting. Now it's 89% frozen when a deer carcass is defrosted you're gonna be able to easily uh, harvest it if it's too frozen you cannot hope to harvest anything unless you have the proper tools so let's take some meat there's about 1.3 kilograms of meat left and if i select 0.5 you can see it's gonna take 10 minutes let's take one kilogram now it's gonna take 20 minutes and also consume 75 calories so each action you choose in this game is gonna consume some amount of calories so keep that in mind uh, let's take everything okay for a total of 25 minutes and let's not forget our fire will burn for about 43 minutes let's take a quick look uh, no actually 27 minutes so let's make sure it's not gonna go out uh, let's get some more branches and sticks so our campfire doesn't go out while we are harvesting the meat from the carcass 
get those sticks. Alright. Nicely done. Now we go back to our campfire. I'm gonna stack this fire with some more wood. Let's put all of those six sticks on fire. Now we have about one hour of time. And let's completely remove all the meat that is left from this carcass. This time is passing by. Cool. And since we do have a fire going, let's cook the meat right away. So let's select this cooking slot here. Press cook. And now we have some rancid venison. Why is it rancid? Because probably the carcass has been outside for a while now. So let's cook this venison. Gonna use the second slot for my second piece of venison. This piece of venison is gonna take 14 minutes and the other one is gonna take about one hour. Why? Because this one is about one kilogram of meat and the other one is only about uh, a quarter of that so it's gonna cook much more quicker let's take a quick look around while the meat is Hope nobody cooking needs this anymore. let's take a flare check this plastic container also a poor soul here that has frozen to death Oh, look at this. Simple tools. These are going to come in handy when our, we are going to craft some more complicated recipes. Crafting uh, recipes. We can go inside this train cart just by going up this tree trunk. This fallen tree. Easily does it. And cool, we have some nice well, this stuff will come in handy. Cool books that we can use to research. One about small arms, one about rifles, some revolver ammunition, and a firearm cleaning kit. This is gonna help us keep our weapons in good condition. Okay, let's return to that fire now so it doesn't extinguish. 12 minutes left. Okay, this piece of venison is cooked and we can try and eat it to gain about 200 calories. Let's eat it by pressing space. As you can see, we have also gained some small knowledge about cooking. My campfire is about to go out um, and I still need about 24 minutes. My fire is going to go out in 4 minutes. I might just uh, use one of these books. So I'm going to use one of these books to stoke my fire. That's going to be probably enough to finish cooking this piece of meat. Okay, takes half an hour to take the hide from the deer. And if I want to take some guts, it's going to take about 10 minutes each. I'm going to take two guts. With my hunting knife. Because if I don't use my tools, it's going to take 1 hour and 20 minutes. So let's use this knife and get some guts. Alright. You can see my fire is starting to die now but my meat is completely cooked nice I'm gonna leave this deer carcass here now let's keep going okay let's see what we can find by exploring some more Where are these train tracks going to lead us? I'm getting tired now. 
You can see that by looking at the eye icon on the lower left. Wires. Oh, look at that. There's a cabin. Let's take a look at that cabin. There's also a lake with some fishing huts in the distance. What have we found here? Mr. Lake. Nice. We also have some rose hips. Let's harvest some of these. Gonna be able to make some tea. The fruit of a wild rose bush can be used to make tea that helps manage pain. So yeah, pretty helpful. And some other bushes right over here. Let's harvest these also. Some sticks. Always helpful. Let's gather some of these up. We might need them to make a fire. Any more sticks? Oh, this is just a branch. Oh, there's a stick here. You might have probably observed there's a red icon on the right of the screen. That means that we are on a on a very inclined terrain. So whenever you see that red icon, that means that there might be a possibility of injuring yourself by spraining your your uh, your wrist or your legs or your feet. So pay close attention to that and avoid as much as possible uh, walking on inclined terrain like so. Even more if you are overburdened with too much loot in your inventory. So let's uh, get inside this cabin before we freeze our asses off. Let's use the front door. And we are in the camp office. This is pretty nice. I'm gonna be honest with you, this is a good uh, location to start a base, to start a, you know, to have like a base that you can come back to whenever you go out exploring. Why is it good? Because we have a workbench, good for crafting and also uh, a lot of space. If we go upstairs, we also have some beds that we can use, a wood stove, really handy to cook and keep ourselves warm. We have a sport vest. Let's uh, this will come in handy. Let's use this up. Maybe we can find some more clothing in these drawers. Yeah, there's another bedroll. But we already have one. Oh, look at this. There's some painkillers on these desks. Let's search the cupboard. Always search the, everything. Look around all the places you can find. Oh, a recycle can. All the items that you find in this game are at some degree or another very important and useful for your survival. Just have to know which are which and how they can help you out. And I'm gonna try and show you as much as I can in these tutorial videos. Some more spray paint. Oh, look at that, some maple syrup. Welcome to Canada. Let's take this. And hidden underneath this counter, we have some pork and beans. Thank you very much. And look at that, a cooking pot. I'll take it. This is gonna be very, very helpful if you wanna melt snow and cook stuff much more efficiently. We're gonna take that. Also a jerry can with some fuel oil for the lantern. I'm gonna take this also. Oh, look at that, we have a sprain risk. That means we have too much stuff in our inventory. As you can see here in the upper left, uh, before there was a limit of 30 kilograms, but now that limit has gone to 26. 
and why has it gone down to 26 you ask is because we are tired our energy is drained so whenever your energy is drained like so you are also less capable of carrying much in your backpack so see the limit that you can carry has also gone down and you can see the red icon in the lower right that means you are over encumbered and you're gonna be much more slow to sprint or to walk when you're over encumbered like that you can do either two things you can try and store a couple of your items let's say we put some things in this file cabinet things that we can use later like uh, these gloves here let's store them inside the file cabinet uh, let's see what else can we put in here that is really heavy some can some foot cans let's put those foot cans there uh, what else the simple tools they're about one kilogram of weight let's put that in the file cabinet also we have way too many spray paint cans let's put a couple in inside there also okay we still have some light left so whenever you have some more light from some daylight left you can use that time to uh, mend some of your clothes craft uh, you know some low maintenance activities let's use this vest now let's also change our clothes which are much more warmer like this one is in a better condition let's wear this instead we have an accessory that you can put here the ear wrap okay let's put this up nice now we have a warmth bonus of eight and the windproof of three and we also have a 12 percent protection but of course all these clothes are encumbering so your sprint effectiveness has gone down to 96 percent uh, instead of 100 so also keep that in mind if you have too many clothes on your don't expect to be able to run uh, as hussein bolt all right let's go up, go up and put some of the spare clothes in this drawer here we might be able to find some use for them later as you can see the hoodie is worn because you have like a small indication here a small uh, icon here that means that it's equipped also the running shoes uh, the scarf and that's about it now my life here it has been depleted because of the freezing I've been freezing my ass off outside I was having an hypothermia risk so you're probably wondering how am i gonna get that health up it's pretty easy you just have to sleep and sleep is gonna improve your health but before you go to sleep you also have to make sure that you are well nourished and that you have enough water in your system so don't go to bed if you're too thirsty make sure you drink some water and also when you click on the bed you're gonna see how much calories we have and if let's say you're gonna sleep for about nine hours you're gonna consume 600 of these calories so make sure you have enough calories stored here on the left before you attempt to sleep for nine hours because if you don't have enough calories and you go to sleep with, with an empty stomach your health is not gonna improve it's gonna do the complete opposite you're gonna lose health so don't go to sleep on an empty stomach or uh, if you're too thirsty okay those two things are really important right now we have uh, enough water and we just need we're just gonna need to consume some food it's gonna eat that venison let's take a quick look at our clothes this is something that I like to do before going to sleep. I'm just checking on my clothes and try and see if I can repair some of them. I don't have enough cloth. Okay, I'm not able to 
repair anything right now, but I can get more cloth. Uh, look at it. there's some cloth right in front of me. Okay, this piece of sheet here. Just gonna select it with my left click. And as you can see, if I use my hunting knife, I'm gonna be able to uh, recover three pieces of cloth. If I use my hands, it's gonna take 15 minutes and 56 calories. But if I use my hunting knife, it's gonna be much more easier. It's gonna take less time, nine minutes, and also less calories. So always select the best tool for the job. Right now, the hunting knife is the best I have. So let's break this piece of cloth into more pieces. And let's try and mend my mittens. My beautiful blue mittens. All right, let's, let's give it a shot. It's gonna take 30 minutes to complete. Let's hope we have enough time before the sun goes down. Sweet. Look at those mittens. They are new. Well, com almost new. Now if you go back, the condition of this new wool mittens is going to provide even more warmth than before. So keep your clothing in good shape if you expect to make it out there in the frozen wasteland of the north northern Canadian territories. We can even try and get this woody in a better shape but it's starting to get dark and when it's too dark and you cannot see what you're doing you're probably gonna uh, fail your repairing attempt. Also before going to bed if you, re if you recall we managed to get some guts from that deer carcass and these fresh guts uh, are better dry so we're gonna drop them on the floor by selecting them here in the backpack and dropping them down now you, as you can see on the floor they are starting to get cured it's gonna take about five days of air drying indoors once uh, these guts are completely dry we can use them to uh, make uh, some custom clothes or even a bow or other weapons or traps we're gonna leave those down on the floor to dry and you're gonna see that health bar go up all right I'm gonna have some sweet dreams now let's select about nine hours of sleep and you see you're not don't have to be worried you're not gonna freeze to death while sleeping because it feels like five degrees and the bed offers you about plus six degrees celsius so you're gonna be fine you're safe to sleep inside this bed let's go ahead and press sleep now and yay we have survived for one day and 11 hours and it's pitch black inside this cabin because it's still nighttime food now with a granola bar see sometimes if you eat a granola bar your thirst is gonna go down your water level is gonna go down because some of these foods are more you know dry so whenever you eat them it's gonna make you thirsty of course but some foods can also offer you some hydration also depending on the food item gonna use my storm lantern to light my way up oh no my lantern is almost out of juice so yeah thank you everyone for having uh, watched my guide video i hope you enjoyed i hope you learned something from this experience and i'm gonna continue this with the second episode hopefully uh, provide you with some good advice on how to survive in this beautiful game which is the long dark stay safe and peace out and don't forget to subscribe yeah share the love bye bye